doing a show. Um, anyway, first time here, the way this works is I talk for 24 minutes. Uh, you, whatever platform you are, we're on many, many platforms here, uh, can listen. And if you have any health questions at all, type it in on a platform that you're on. Uh, at the break, Garrett and John, my producers, will read me your questions. I'll answer them if I have an answer for you. Then we'll do another 24-minute segment, and then I'll answer more questions for you. So that's how the game is played here. And it's a great opportunity for you to have any health questions answered uh, because where else can you get these questions answered? Most doctors don't know a lot of the things we're going to talk. We have a good variety of things we're going to talk about. Um, if you're listening live, please put in hashtag live right now. If you're listening uh, on a replay, put in hashtag replay. If you would do that for me, I'd appreciate it. And then also when you do that, just tell me where you're from. So you can say hashtag, you know, live Australia, whatever it is. I just like to know where folks are from. That's just for me. Just want to know. All right. I'm ready to go whenever you guys are. Ready? Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am glad you're with me today. Today, we're going to talk about sugar. And it's a big problem. It's very addictive. It's everywhere. It's cheap, many times free. And it does a lot of damage in our society. So we're going to talk about what, what it is, what it does to the body, and then things you can do to get around it. I'm going to give you a little workarounds here. So if you look back 200 years ago, the average American ate about two pounds of sugar a year. In 1970, the average American was eating 123 pounds of sugar. And as of late, we're eating 152 pounds of sugar per person per year in the United States. Now, if we could fix one thing in our nutritional system, there's a lot of things, a lot of one things I like to fix, but sugar is one of them. Uh, National Health uh, and Nutrition Examination Survey re revealed that nearly 40% of Americans are obese, and that's a big issue because it speeds up the aging process. It increases your risk of so many other diseases, and it's easy. And I was talking to one of my doctor friends the other day. We were talking about these new drugs that people are taking, the injectable drugs, and they're losing weight because it, they, it slows down your digestive system, and you don't get hungry, and so you lose weight pretty quickly. And we were talking about how dangerous they are. And, you know, one of my doctor friends said, yeah, but what happens if you're 400 pounds, 500 pounds? Well, six of one, half a dozen, the other almost, because you don't eat, you don't get nutrients. It slows down the digestive system. And now we're seeing long-term side effects from it too. So the fix might sound like a good idea, but as far as it having adverse effects on your health, yeah, it does. In fact, I even heard a, a lawyer commercial the other day saying that they're going to start suing the companies. Uh, you know, for you, you took this drug and it wasn't safe. And so sugar's a biggie. We're supposed to consume, uh, the average American, according to the American Heart Association, a Americans consume about 77 grams of sugar per day. That's three times the amount of what we should. The maximum sugar you should have, carbohydrates really, is about 40 grams a day. That's the absolute max from all sources. Now, most of us go beyond that because it's easy. You can get carbohydrates or sugars from breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, sugar, of course, sodas. It's everywhere, and it really gets into the body. American kids consume 81 grams per day, equaling 65 pounds of added sugar every year. Now, this is a pickle because when I was a kid, I'm old. Uh, by the way, that's about enough to fill a bathtub. Um, when I was a kid, grocery stores were pretty small. Now grocery stores are huge. Most of the stuff in a grocery store I would not recommend you eat because it's calories, it's filling, may not kill you instantly, but it's not something you want to put in your body. It's not good choices. So the nice part is when you eat the food you're supposed to eat, it's so much less expensive, better for you. You live long, you have more energy, your love life improves, your energy improves, your brain function improves. But sugar is at the top of the list that cause problems, including joint pain. Now, as a chiropractor, as a pain management expert, as a non-surgical orthopedist, uh, I've seen a lot of patients in my 40 years of seeing patients. And inflammation gets in the body and it hurts. Inflammation also increases your risk of other diseases like heart disease and cancer. And it's our toxic bodies that I deal with every day. And I, I, I say tongue in cheek, that is job security for me. As long as people keep abusing their bodies physically and chemically, I'm always going to have a job. I would love to not have that to happen anymore. I would love for people to actually take care of themselves and get well. Now, of course, the sugar industry fought this. The sugar industry kind of blew it back on fat, saying fats were bad. Fat, fat industry blew it back on sugar, said sugar was bad. They're both bad to a point. 
Now, there are good fats in the body. I mean, you can eat like an avocado, which is good fats. But if you eat four avocados, you're going to gain weight. And in fact, the number one reason people come to me when it comes to weight is, of course, they're too heavy. And the number two reason is they want to learn how to gain weight. And one of the things I tell them is eat more nuts, seeds, and avocados, and that can help you put on weight. So fats, good fats are are okay. The body needs them. And a lot of people don't get enough good fats. But the sugar, nobody needs more sugar. Sugar is just horrible. Now, when we digest sugar, what happens is it goes into your body. And your body releases something called insulin. Your pancreas releases insulin. And insulin goes into the blood, goes into the cells, and kind of acts like a key. So your cell is is, is here, okay? And the, the insulin goes into this keyhole, opens it up, and allows sugar into the cell. And then the sugar, the sugar we use in the body is glucose. It uses it as fuel, and it closes, uses fuel, and then you, you need more sugar. Another molecule of insulin comes, opens up the cell, and that's how it works. Well, if you eat too much sugar, the cells can't take any more. The cells kind of send a message to the body and say, listen, I can't take any more sugar. You're gunking up the works. So I'm going to resist that insulin. That's called insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes. I'm going to resist that insulin from opening me up and letting the sugar in. Okay? That works. So then the blood sugar is floating around in the blood. The, the sugar's floating around in the blood. And the body has to get rid of it. The body says, I can't have this high sugar content in my blood because it can kill me. So what it does, it sends it to the liver and stores it as glycogen. Glycogen is your stored fuel for later on. What most of us do is we fill up the glycogen stores. Cells can't take any more. Cells are full. Glycogen stores are full. What do we do with it? The body sends it back to the liver and converts it into something called triglycerides, which are then stored as fat. That's why sugar makes you fat. So all fat is is storage of what we call energy. I don't like that term because it gives it a positive spin. But all fat cells are storing energy. The body couldn't use that energy, that glucose, so it stores it for use later on. Well, it works if you use it later on. doesn't work well if you don't use it later on. And that becomes the issue. Now, what's worse than sugar and insulin attacking the cells are polyunsaturated fats. Polyunsaturated fats, we call them seed oils. Uh, Corn oil, peanut oil, uh, cottonseed oil, uh, canola oils. These oils, usually clear, they're in a plastic bottle, they're really cheap, get them at the grocery store. Those oils can clog up the keyhole so the insulin can't get in to open the cell. And so the sugar now floats around in the blood and then gets stored as fat as well. So if you're eating, let's say, extra virgin organic coconut oil, It won't clog up the keyhole. Same amount of calories of polyunsaturated fat, well, it clogs up the keyhole. You can't utilize fuel. So not uh, not only does the the, the, uh, the fat have calories, you're getting the sugar to be stored as fat as well. So if you eat something fried in a cheap oil like peanut oil, you're really packing on the pounds. And that's real dangerous because fat's dangerous for many reasons. But one of the things that it does is... If you have a lot of fat cells, your testosterone can go into the fat cell and come out as estrogen. So you're sucking up your testosterone and turning it into estrogen. Estrogen is a growth hormone and causes you to lay down fat. Well, fat produces estrogen, which causes you to lay down fat. And that's why when you're fat, it's hard to lose weight. Now, I used to be fat. That's why I can say the F word so much. So I understand that cycle you caught in. And it's tough. It's tough to break it out. But if we can free up those keyholes, get rid of those those polyunsaturated fats, allow insulin to start working again, cut down the sugar intake so the body can utilize the sugar that it has, then the body says, wait a minute, I've run out of sugar. I've got to use an alternative source of energy. Well, what do we go to? Our reserves. Let's use up the glycogen. You can use the glycogen. What happens then? You start burning fat if you use up the glycogen. So that's how you lose weight. You deprive the body of fuel so the body has to use fat as its reserve fuel. Now, sugar also feeds yeast and bad bacteria in the, in the intestine. And when that happens, it causes the gut, the digestive system, to get little gaps in the, in the walls. And we get little gaps in the walls, viruses, germs, bacteria, undigested food can be absorbed through these little gaps, and it's called leaky gut syndrome. Now, when I went to school, I remember learning about leaky gut syndrome. I was about 19 years old. Dr. Richard Lord was my, impre- my professor, and he talked about leaky gut syndrome. 
And he says, nobody talks about this. And I'd never heard of it before. And it was poo-pooed, you know, whatever, you know, 40 years ago. Now it's mainstream. We realize that that gut can't be permeable. You can't have gaps in the cells letting junk get absorbed into the blood. And when those gaps become open, you can absorb junk. And inflammation caused by sugar can cause that. And then viruses and yeast. So sugar is so bad on so many different levels. Here's a reason to give it up. It ages you very quickly. Sugar can bind to proteins in the body. And it's a process called glycation. And you, cr you have something called advanced glycated end products, A-G-E, age. It ages you. I, kind of funny how that, that, that works out. But advanced glycated end products bind to car c connective tissue, uh, like collagen, and it breaks it down. So you'll get wrinkly. You'll look old. But that's what you see. Let's talk about inside the body. That collagen holds your bones together. It holds your skin together. It holds your muscles together. And you're breaking down the connective tissue. And so now the body becomes more frail. And so if you eat a lot of sugar, the, the collagen and the connective tissue is weak. And several things can happen. Number one is the bones can become loose, again, simply put, and move out of place. And if the bones move out of place, they can pinch nerves, especially in the spine. So if a bone moves out of place because connective tissue is weak, it moves out of place, it pinches a nerve. First thing that happens, one of the first things that happens is pain. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, wrist pain, arm pain, knee pain, something is irritating the nerves. It's pretty simple. We need to put the bones back in place. That's chiropractic care, by the way. Chiropractic care puts the bones back in place. But if you keep eating a bad diet, the ligaments re remain weak and the bones keep shifting out of place. So sugar now becomes very expensive. All that cheap soda that you bought, those cheap candy bars that you bought. I got a coupon the other day to the grocery store. Uh, three pack of candy bars for free because I'm a good customer. I threw the coupon away. I didn't want anybody to use it. That would be contributing to the delinquency of, of you. So every patient that comes in our offices Whatever the reason, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain. We had a patient the other day for erectile dysfunction, headaches, numbness, tingling, blurred vision, brain fog. Uh, you name it. We've seen everything. We do a nutrition evaluation on them because I want the patients, our patients, to get the best results possible. Because if you're going to pay me, I want to make sure I do a good job. I was raised in a very poor family. My grandparents were immigrants, and we were taught that you do a good job no matter what you do. didn't matter what it was. And... So we want to make sure you get the best results humanly possible. And we do that by not only doing chiropractic evaluations and structural evaluations, we also do a nutrition evaluation. Now, you're going to be hooked on sugar. Most of us are. And how do you come off the sugar? Well, there's a really cool supplement called Gymnema, G-Y-M-N-E-M-A. And Gymnema, and if you send me an email, I'll send, you, send me a, a, a link. Ask, ask me for the link. I'll send you a link to the brand I use. Uh, gymnema stabilizes your blood sugar, and that helps fight the cravings. Because your blood sugar spikes, and then it crashes. When you crash, you want to get high again. And what's a quick, easy, simple, free, uh, cheap fix? Sugar. And so you're just like a heroin addict, just like a cocaine addict. I want the cheapest fix possible, as fast as possible. And so that's what sugar does. So if I can stabilize your blood sugar, you don't spike and then crash. Those cravings start to stabilize. And here's a little uh, off-label use uh, for, for, for gymnema. You take, a, take it and you take one of the tablets and you chew it. Now, it doesn't taste good. But what it does is it essentially, this is simply put, numbs your taste buds. When you numb your taste buds, you try eating something sweet, it has no flavor at all. It's the weirdest thing. We did a demo on it the other day. We're going to put it on our social media. Um, I used Christy, one of my, one of my employees and I had her, you know, she had chocolate and I had her chew on a gymnema and I said, okay, now have a piece of chocolate. And she goes, I don't taste anything. I said, perfect. So now when you have these cravings and you don't want to eat the chocolate because it doesn't taste sweet, you're able to stop eating the chocolate or the cookie or the cake or the donut, whatever it is. And gymnema is wonderful for stabilizing blood sugar. I think that every diabetic in the world should be on it. I think everybody in the world should take it if you have sugar issues because it really helps stabilize that blood sugar because that sugar is eating away at your connective tissue. And again, not just your wrinkles in your face and your droopy butt, 
It's also eating away at your spine, your hips, your knees, your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists. And so many times when a patient comes to see us, they're in pain. And we do an evaluation, and I look at their diet, and I said, wow, you eat a lot of sugar, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's going to take a little bit longer, and it's going to cost a little more money to help stabilize this because you don't have all the connective tissue that you need or the healthy connective tissue that you need. So, folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, if you're just tuning in, and I'm talking about a case against sugar, why you shouldn't eat sugar. I'll give you a lot of reasons why you shouldn't eat sugar. Now, if you'd like to make an appointment to come see us, whether it's for nutrition, whether it's for uh, brain fog, whether it's for digestive issues, but the main reason we see patients is pain, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, headaches, sciatica. My team of doctors and I would love to be your doctors. Because what we do that's different than everybody else is we try to get to the cause of the problem and not just treat the symptoms. Big difference. So when we get to the cause of the problem, uh, we get, I find, better results. Way less expensive, longer lasting, and hopefully we can uh, avoid using any medications if possible. I'm not against medication. I just would love to get you off your medication if we can or at least prevent you from getting on it or stabilize it. Stop you from getting more. So if you want to make an appointment, in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. I want to be your doctor. So go to my website, drjoe.com, D-R-J-O-E.com. Very simple. You can book it right online. You can call us. Uh, we accept people with all insurances. It depends what your insurance covers. Sometimes it's in-network, out-of-network, no coverage. It's all about your insurance, not about us. So don't blame us. Okay, you got to get better insurance then. And we're happy to set up a time uh, to set up a consultation. We can do it this week. We can do it as soon as possible. So drjoe.com, stop suffering needlessly. I hear it multiple times a day, every day of my life. Why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't somebody tell me about this? Why didn't my doctor refer me here? Why didn't my insurance company tell me to come here? I don't know. I don't have that answer. Now you know. You know we're here. We'd love to see you. Atlanta, Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Or we can do a remote consultation as well. We can do it online. But drjoe.com, book your appointment right now. Normally, the first visit is $940. For you guys, I've reduced that to $299. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays, and a complete nutrition evaluation on a follow-up visit. Why wouldn't you do that? I don't know anybody who's doing that at any price. Certainly not at $299. And then if we do need further care, we'll talk about it. This is what we recommend. What you decide to do is totally up to you. But I'll give you nutrition advice, supplement advice, structural advice, digestive advice. Some, most people listen. Some people don't. It's totally up to you what you do with it. But why wouldn't you want to find out what you can do? So drjoe.com, we'd love to see you as a patient. Do it this week. Do it right now. So if you're just tuning in, what I'm talking about today is a case against sugar because it's everywhere and it tastes good. I like sugar. Everyone likes sugar. So why do we like it? That becomes the question. What is so great about sugar? In fact, people say about dairy products, I'll go off on a tangent here for a second. Uh, people say about dairy products, Dr. Joe, I can give up all dairy products except, say it with me now, cheese. I can't give up my cheese, Dr. Joe. I love my cheese. You don't love your cheese. You love what the cheese does to your brain. In dairy products, there's a chemical called casomorphine. Caso meaning casein and morphine being morphine, essentially. And it's produced by all animals. Humans produce it too. And different types, but it's all casomorphines. And when you take it, you get high from it. And we believe the reason nature put it there is so that babies would calm down when they drank breast milk. And they would calm down and go to sleep and, and stop being so fussy. So what happens is when you get older, uh, you still like getting high, just like babies do. And milk has a very watered-down version of the casein, of the casomorphines. But when you concentrate it down into a, a cheese, take a lot of water out, you concentrate down those casomorphines, it's really hard to give up. And so you're not liking cheese, you're liking the addiction from the casomorphine. And so just understand, you got to reset the brain with any addiction, calming it down. So when we eat sugar, talk about brain, it releases dopamine and serotonin. These are neurotransmitters in the brain that boost your mood, and they stimulate the area of the brain associated with pleasure, the nucleus accumbens. Now, dopamine works on the regulators of your brain, and when large amounts are released, you downregulate your reception to dopamine. So what happens is, I get high, and I enjoy it, 
And my body says that you got too high that time. We're not going to let you get that high again. So it down regulates my pleasure centers. And I need more and more and more to try to reach that high again. Uh, in the drug world, it's called chasing the dragon. First time you get high, you'll never get that high again. Because your brain down regulated and said, whoa, 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 that was too risky. I can't let you do that again. Same thing happens with sugar. So when it used to take one cupcake, now it takes two cupcakes and three cupcakes and five cupcakes. I was just talking to a patient. He was at a retreat, a weight loss retreat. And one of the ladies was severely overweight. She broke into the snack closet with a credit card and ate like 20 bars of these snack bars that they had. So the addiction's real. I get it. It's a real addiction. You have to dress it accordingly. And like we said, one cupcake maybe did it, then two, then three, then four. It doesn't satisfy your cravings because we're down-regulating. And sugar is more addictive than cocaine if you look at the way it affects an MRI. It lights up the part of the brain on an MRI. Uh, it bright bright uh, waves come off it uh, when you eat it. And so it's quick, it's easy, it's legal, uh, it's accessible. And so it's really hard to break those problems. So some of the chronic problems associated with ex excess sugar in a diet. Metabolic syndrome, that's high cholesterol, high blood pressure, belly fat. It's the, a series of things. You have to have two of them. You get something called metabolic syndrome. Fatigue, pain, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, autoimmune diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, thyroid conditions are autoimmune diseases in many cases. Respiratory diseases, cardiovascular disease, irritable bowel syndrome, thinning hair, yeast infections, hormonal problems, mood swings, ADD, ADHD, depression, chronic sinusitis, diabetes, fatigue, cancer, and of course, weight gain as well. So a lot of the health problems that you have were caused by you eating too much sugar. And the thing that hurts when I say that is caused by you. You did it. And patients come to me all every day, all day, every day, whether through our website, drjoe.com, in person, they call me, they'll set up consultations. And it's very hard for me to tell them, but you did this. You caused this. Well, my doctor put me on drugs for my high blood pressure, put me on drugs for my cholesterol, put me on drugs for my diabetes. Um, and I say, what's the end game here? What's your plan? What's the plan? You're on these medications. For how long are you on a medication? I guess forever. Okay. I, if you need to take them forever, absolutely. I support that 100%. What if there was a way to come off the medication? Anybody talk about any action steps, proactive steps to take? Nope. Nobody ever mentioned that to me. You have high blood pressure? Here's the medication. High cholesterol? Here's the medication. Well, maybe you have high cholesterol because your hormones are off and you need more cholesterol to produce hormones. Maybe your blood pressure is up because there's damage to the kidney. We have to increase pressure through the kidney. Maybe the blood pressure is up because there's a neurological issue with the vagus nerve. Maybe the blood pressure is up because you're dehydrated. Maybe the blood pressure is up because you don't have enough nitric oxide in your body. Well, doctors never mentioned that to me. Now, I'm not against the doctors. Please understand that. They're doing what they're taught to do. And they're really good at that. I don't know how to prescribe medication. I have no idea. But I'm really good, my team of doctors and I, at getting to the cause of the problem and not just treating the symptoms. So don't not take your medication. That's a double negative. Uh, take your medication and let's work with you to try to bring down the causes, the inflammation, the pinched nerves, the acid reflux, the malabsorption, the lack of nutrients. A lot of diseases we have are, are, are diseases of, of deficiency. You just don't have enough nutrition for the body to work. I did a show the other day on long COVID. And a lot of long COVID, we're seeing our people are nutritionally depleted. They're not methylating B12. They don't have enough folate in their body. They're not able to absorb vitamin D, vitamin D3. Make sure you take D3. You got to have K2 with it. So it's not complicated. It might be for you, and it was for me when I first started. But this is what I do. And I like it. So if you'd like to make an appointment to come see us, the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. So neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain. Folks, if you're ever in a car accident, please, if the car is damaged, you're damaged. I've never seen it any other way. So please come see us immediately. Don't fall for these fake phone calls. Go see this doctor, see that lawyer. All a scam. So if you want to make an appointment, drjoe.com. We can get you in this week. Uh, normally the first visit, $940. We've reduced that to $299 for you because I care about you. And then if, if further care is necessary, we talk about that. It's still the most effective, least expensive treatment for back pain. And we do nutrition. And we talk about your digestive system. And we talk about things like sugar addiction. We want to do everything we can to get you well 
and keep you well. So once again, the website is drjoe.com. We've got a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. Drjoe.com. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We'll be right back. All right. All right. So quick one here. If you're going to eat sugar, how much can you have within a 24-hour period? 40 grams a day max, all carbohydrates. That's breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, potatoes, rice, 40 grams a day max. So if you're going to eat sugar, I'm going to talk about some substitutes coming up. I'll try to weave that in for you. But the answer is, is don't do it. No. Have you heard of Candida Stat? Candida Stat. I know what Candida is. I know what Stat is. I'm um, assuming it's a supplement. So uh, no. <laughs> All right. It was a question of uh, fighting sugar cravings. Oh, yeah. It probably has Jamima in it. So huh. yeah, I would guess. Jamima, chromium. There's a couple of things you could do to stabilize sugar cravings. Yeah. Does the body react to stevia the same way as sugar? No. It doesn't release insulin like artificial sweetener does. So. And I may have missed it. Did you bring up agave? I did not. Hmm. I guess I should. Yeah. I will make a note of that because I was going to talk about sub- substitutes. Uh, is it in here on my list? Spoiler. It's, uh, it's not healthy. It's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Garrett heard me do enough of these lectures. <laughs> I will talk about it. Good call. Um, and does wild yam cream help to balance women's hormones? It can, yes. Mm-hmm. Make sure you get a good quality one, though. What is wild yam cream? Wild yam cream is a precursor uh, to progesterone. So it's a, it's, you put it on your skin, and your skin's a sponge, so it absorbs it in. It helps your body produce hormones. So, huh. Yeah, how about that? Garrett learned something new again today. Yeah. Every day, I try to teach him something new. <laughs> um, and can you send me the link to get Jim Nima? Yes. Um, we will put that in either in the um, link in bio uh, or a, a direct post here for this week. But we'll get to the, we'll get that out to you. Okay, guys. remind me to do that because yep. I'll forget because I'm old. Garrett's young; he's got a good brain. So, well, he's young. No. <laughs> uh, that is that is it for this segment. Cool. Uh, but guys, drop some questions, and we'll get back to you after this. Another twenty-four minutes. Yep. Let's keep rocking, baby. Ready. Did we run a disclaimer before? We'll run it now. Run it now. Okay. So. There we go. And we're back. All right. Got to put it, got to cover the legal ease. <laughs> Our in-house attorney, Lisa, will yell at us if we don't do these things. So, All right. Ready? Part two. Ready? Hey, folks. Dr. Joe Esposito, if you're just joining us, welcome. If you stayed with me, thank you. We're talking today... Uh, I, I'm pleading my case. I feel like I'm in court. A case against sugar and why it's so bad. Now, sugar causes a lot of inflammation in the body as well. If you just tuned in, um, we, the, the other half, uh, we, we just covered all of that. I don't want to repeat myself. But all our shows, uh, we archive them on our website, drjoe.com. And we also archive them on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. So if you hear a show one day, uh, was this show, I do a Sunday night show on WSB, um, whether it's a pop-up podcast. Uh, you could always go to my website, drjoe.com, and find it. Uh, if you're a podcast junkie, they're all on the podcast service too, Dr. Joe for the health of it. So go to your podcast service, Dr. Joe for the health of it. You can search it by date, actually. And we have the shows there too. And if you have any questions, I mean, I've been doing this for 14 years. I've been doing radio. I've been lecturing for 40 years. There's always new information coming up. So you're not going to get everything in one show, in one lecture, in one podcast. You can always send me questions through the website, drjoe.com, D-R-J-O-E.com, and I'm happy to answer your health questions for you. I love this. I've been doing this for about 40 years now. I, I'm more excited now than I've ever been in my life because there's so much for me to teach you, and there's so much for you to learn um, that we're not going to run out of content, so don't worry. People say, you're a busy man, Dr. Joe. Four clinics. Radio shows, television shows, lectures, podcasts. I said, eh, gives me something to do. Keeps me off the street. So we talked about the dangers of sugar. I want to talk about sugar and inflammation and pain. Now, inflammation is a key aspect of the immune system response to injury and infection. So if I punch you in the arm, you're going to have inflammation. It sends out inflammation to create almost like a a cushion or a buffer or a, a padding around that area so it can heal. If I have an infection, same thing, inflammation to protect that area. Acute inflammation helps heal damaged tissues and defends against things like viruses and bacteria. The problem is when inflammation goes on for too long and becomes what we call chronic inflammation. 
Chronic inflation, inflammation can last for months or years, depending on what's causing it. Again, we always want to get to the cause of your health care problem, not just treat the symptoms. So we talked uh, the other day about long COVID, and we believe that even if the virus is gone, the damage that it caused to the organs causes this chronic inflammation. And that's where you have over 200 symptoms with long COVID. And there's no way to test for it. So how do we know if it's long COVID or not? It could just be that you're tired. It could just be that you're uh, of a bad diet. It could be that you're uh, getting old. Well, that's the problem we have. But what, what the, the standard right now is, did you have this problem before you had COVID or after? And the answer is you have it after. It's probably long COVID. And it's affecting so many millions of people around the world. But it, we think it's all about inflammation. So if you're doing sugar, you're adding more inflammation to the body. And if the hypothesis is correct, you're going to make the problem worse. So chronic inflammation is the root of most health problems and most diseases. And sugar causes inflammation. So, yeah, we think about sugar and diabetes. We think about sugar and weight gain. What about sugar and heart disease? What about sugar and cancer? What about sugar and brain fog? What about sugar and Alzheimer's? What about sugar and uh, uh, irritable bowel syndrome? The answer is yeah. It's probably related to all of them. And so cutting it back. And one of the common signs of sugar is body pain, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain. So as a chiropractor and a pain expert, I'm board certified in pain management and non-surgical orthopedics and double board certified in nutrition. Um, we look at the patient and we say, okay, what do you think is causing the pain? And from a structural standpoint, we could check the spine. We can check the joints. There's 206 bones in the body. And if the joints are out of place, we can put them back in place. And then we do a dietary workup on every patient we see. Unless the patient says no, we do it. And many times we look at their diet and we say, okay, we can give you the best chiropractic care. You can get the best surgery, the best physical therapy, the best psychological therapy, uh, the best exercise physiologists working with you. But if you're damaging the body chemically, you're not going to get all the results that you want. You might get results, but not the results you want. And so that's why we try to deal with every patient as not only a structural patient, but as a nutrition or chemical patient. Because the one thing you have control over in your life is what you eat. Nobody's forcing the fork down your throat. You might have genetic problems. You might have been in an accident. You might have a fracture. You might have genetic predisposition to certain diseases. But nobody's forcing that fork down your mouth except you. And so you have to now man up and say, you know what? I got to take responsibility for my own health. What can I do? And it's really not hard. It's easy. One of the secrets I have when it comes to sugar is get the bad food out of the house. If it's in the house, you're going to eat it. If it's out of the house, you're not going to eat it. So I load up my refrigerator as often as I can with a lot of fruits and vegetables. Apples, peaches, pears, bananas, pineapples, mangoes, kiwi, star fruit. I had a honeydew today, uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, lettuce. And a couple of things happen when I do this. Number one, uh, I grew up really poor, and we didn't waste anything. My father was disabled, so we didn't have a lot at all. And... If it's in the refrigerator, you got to eat it because we don't want it going bad. I can hear my mother's voice from beyond the grave saying, we don't want this going bad. We're going to need to eat this. And if it's cookies and cakes and donuts, you're going to eat it. If it's apples and lettuce, you're going to eat that. So having it on hand is very good. Now, one of the reasons I created something called Dr. Joe's Essential Source and Dr. Joe's Super Greens is because sometimes you don't have, have everything on hand. You may not have raw fruits and vegetables. You may not have prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, or multivitamins. And so I created these two powders, Super Greens and Essential Source, and I take a scoop of each, and I mix them together. I shake it up in a jar with coconut milk, almond milk, and I drink it every morning because it's the minimum nutrients that your body needs. I formulated these two, and it took a lot of work to formulate these things because I wanted, how can I get as much in uh, and make it still reasonable? And that's why we do that. But the reason I say that is... Uh, fruits and vegetables might go to waste. This is an easy, convenient, inexpensive form of dried fruits and vegetables, along with everything else. And another reason is when your body gets the nutrients that it needs, many times it breaks the cravings. I've had people over the year tell me that they were smokers, they, they were drug addicts, they were, they were uh, overweight, they were sugaraholics, they were cocaine addicts. And when we get them on nutrients, high quality nutrients over a certain period of time, they say, Doc, my cravings are getting better. You think it has anything to do with the supplements? The answer is yes. As in, do my diet? The answer is yes. Because when you're hungry, you're not hungry for food. You're hungry for nutrition. 
And when I give your body super high concentrated nutrition, the body many times says, I feel better. Countless times patients have come to me and said, Dr. Joe, I can't afford not to take supplements. And I never understood that until now. And I said, what do you mean? And they say, when I take the supplements, I eat less, I feel better, I have more energy, I work harder, my life is better, my love life is better, my family is better. Everything changes when you give the body the nutrients that it needs. So the minimum supplements I would suggest would be Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're on the website, drjoe.com. Uh, they're two powders. And like I said, just mix them up. In fact, right now, Dr. Joe's Hemp uh, Super Greens is half price. Guys, I can't do anything more than come to your house and mix it, which I'm not going to do. I like to mix the Super Greens and the Essential Source together. It has a nice flavor to it. The Super Greens alone are good. The mint is uh, sweet, but the other two, the hemp and the plain, um, are a little boring. Mix it with the Essential Source, and it's really good for you. It tastes good, too. Uh, so they're on the website, drjoe.com. We ship the next business day, sometimes the same business day. So we talk about sugar. That's what we're talking about today and how bad it is, but I also want to give you alternatives, and that's why things like gymnema, we talked about that as a supplement to stabilize your blood sugar. Chromium is also good to stabilize blood sugar. Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, great for stabilizing blood sugar. And these are things that we need to start addressing. We need to say, how do we break this addiction, this nationalist world addiction? And sugar is bad enough. But now we've come out with things like high fructose corn syrup, agave nectar. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit and how bad they are. And you can't forget about children either. If the child, ch child sugar consumption should not be more than three teaspoons of sugar a day, that's about 12 grams. If you ate one cup of kid's cereal, let's say that circular fruit-colored cereal, one cup contains 3.75 teaspoons of sugar, more sugar than a child should have in the entire day they just had in one small serving of breakfast cereal. That breakfast cereal, boy, what a, what a scam that is. So much sugar, so many chemicals and additives, and uh, many of the dyes are related to things like ADD and ADHD, and, and yet we're giving it to our kids. It's tough. I know. Raising kids are tough. I get it. They want to get what the, uh, the, the commercial has. They want to be what their kids, what their friends are doing. I get it. But sometimes you got to be the adult too, at least sometimes. Work on getting the fruits and the vegetables and the supplements into the kids the best you can. Sugar puts a big stress on the liver. When I went to school, uh, if you had fatty liver, you were an alcoholic. Just that simple. Now we're seeing fatty liver in children as young as five years old. Where's it coming from? It's coming from something called high fructose corn syrup, which is sugar. Now, plain old table sugar that we're talking about is half fructose, half glucose. And the glucose gets used as fuel. The fructose goes into the body and has to be converted into glucose. So the body converts fructose into glucose in the liver. And when the body sends fructose to the liver, it converts it into glucose and creates a waste product called uric acid. Uric acid gets into joints and it hurts. And when it hurts, as a pain management expert, I want to get you out of pain. But that's not the worst part. Uric acid prevents the body from properly producing something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. It increases circulation to your brain, your heart, your sex organs, your liver, your spleen. And as we get older, our nitric oxide levels drop anyway. And so I take a nitric oxide supplement every day. And if you have normal or high blood pressure and you're over 30 years old, you probably should too. Because nitric oxide increases circulation throughout the whole body. I love the way it makes me feel. It gives me a rush of energy. It helps my brain work clear. Uh, people with sexual dysfunction, many times it's a nitric oxide deficiency. And so how does that, what, is that, what does this all relate to? If you're eating a lot of sugar, uric acid prevents nitric oxide, proper nitric oxide production. Blood vessels can't expand, can raise your blood pressure. So we talk about salt being bad for blood pressure. How about sugar? being worse than salt for high blood pressure. No one ever talks about that, do they? Well, that's why you listen to these shows. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, by the way, if you're just tuning in. And so we got to take the stress off the liver, and also too much fructose can cause fatty liver. And fatty liver prevents the blood from flowing through the liver properly, gets it clogged up. And one of the things we see when people have a big beer belly, the big gut in the front, but they're not fat anywhere else. They got a flat butt, thin legs, thin arms, and it's big gut. That's usually what we call visceral fat, fat around the organs, and the liver is one of those organs that's oftentimes a culprit. So when I see that big beer belly, uh, 
I don't necessarily want to make, make you lose weight. I want you to detoxify the, the, what we call the visceral fat off the body. Yeah, you lose weight in the process, but it's different than if you're fat all over. And it's way more dangerous, actually, too. How about that? So it can affect the liver. It increases your risk of type 2 diabetes. We talked about that earlier. Uh, exacerbates your mood and mental illnesses. Mood swings, mental illnesses. Much worse when eating sugar. Uh, you've seen it with children. You give kids a bunch of sugar, they become raving maniacs. Well, no, it doesn't have any effect on children. Sugar doesn't have any effect on their mood. Of course it does. If you've ever been around a kid, you know that that's true. They were fine. They eat sugar. They're not fine. It's pretty simple to figure that one out. Of course, we talked about the weight gain. Too much sugar can trick your body into holding on weight because uh, the sugar, again, the glucose gets used as fuel. Once the, fuel cell, once the cells are all filled up, it converts into uh, glycogen. Glycogen is the reserve tank for fuel. Once all the glycogen stores are filled up, it converts to triglycerides, and triglycerides get stored as fat. There's a lot of chemistry in one sentence right there. But that's why sugar makes you fat. Now, what about naturally occurring sugars like maple syrup, honey, agave? Sugar is sugar. Whether it's dextrose, fructose, maltose, galactose, anything with OSE at the end is a sugar. And so they all have to be converted into glucose for the body to use it. And in the process, many times it's waste, product, waste products produced. Now, I want to talk about agave. Years ago, agave came out, and I thought it was the greatest thing in the world because it didn't spike your blood sugar. And you can use it as a sweetener. It's really sweet. I like the flavor. And I thought this is cool. It comes from a cactus. It's natural, right? It comes from a cactus. And I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Well, then it turns out the reason it didn't spike your blood sugar is because table sugar is 50% fructose, 50% glucose. High fructose corn syrup, so horrible, so bad for you. 55% fructose, more fructose than table sugar, only by 5%. Agave comes out, doesn't spike your blood sugar, and tastes sweet. This is amazing. Then we find out why. Agave is about 85% fructose. So glucose spikes your blood sugar. That 85% fructose has to be converted into glucose. So when you eat agave, it doesn't spike it right away. It spikes it later. And so that's where the problem comes in with agave. So don't be fooled by something having agave in it as being healthy. It's actually way worse than table sugar and high fructose corn syrup. How bad is that? So again, that's why you listen to these shows. You learn lots of good information. Uh, artificial sweetener is not a good idea. They don't contain calories, but the body senses that there's something sweet and the body releases insulin. So insulin's floating around trying to open up the cells and let sugar in. Well, there's no sugar there. So what happens now is you start to feel hungry sooner and you start getting sugar cravings. And the studies show that if you use artificial sweetener like diet soda, your chance of gaining weight goes up instead of down. So of all the things I teach you, the seven deadly sins of nutrition, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, of all the things I teach you, my opinion is of all of them, the worst thing is artificial sweetener. So please avoid that at all costs. Uh, aspartame, for example, breaks down to three components, aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Aspartic acid is an excitotoxin to the brain. It causes the brain to fire faster than it's supposed to and can literally burn out your brain cells. And then it creates uh, a phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is toxic to people with liver conditions, and it creates methyl esters, and methyl esters is methanol. It's wood alcohol. You're drinking wood alcohol in very tiny amounts when you use artificial sweetener. So what can we use? Let's talk about something positive here. Stevia, best alternatives. Uh, it's not an artificial sweetener. It comes from uh, the stevia plant, which actually grows uh, primarily in South, Af South America. Leaves are very sweet. And in fact, if you go to a, a garden store, you know, even a big box stores have gardens, uh, when they start putting the plants out, you know, for spring, uh, just go in there. They, many times they sell stevia. It's a little tiny leaves, maybe about the size of your pinky fingernail, and it's a great ground cover. It grows really well, so you can grow your own stevia if you want. It's a great ground cover, but just break off one of the leaves and chew it. You'll be amazed how sweet it tastes. So stevia is a good choice. I use stevia on a regular basis, and it, 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 I don't find anything wrong with it. Honey, still loaded with sugar, and a, a good portion of the honey in this country is fake. It's mixed with high fructose corn syrup, sugar water, um, so it's hard to tell the real stuff. What you can do is if you take some honey, take it out of the jar and just drop some on your finger, it should stay in a little 
drop on your finger. If it starts to run down your finger and type to drip off it, chances are that it's fake. It's been cut. Um, the reason we cut it is because honey is expensive and high fructose corn syrup or sugar water is cheap. And so a lot of countries will mix it and send it in. So you want to try to get it local if you can. That's going to be your best bet. You have a better choice. But again, it's still a sugar, causes inflammation, and can cause pain. So use it very sparingly. And you get, as a pain expert, as a chiropractor, a pain management doctor, uh, if you have pain, I want to get to the cause of your pain and not just treat the symptoms. So that's why in our office, we do chiropractic evaluations on our patients to determine what, what, if it's a structural issue. And then we do a nutrition evaluation to see if there's a chemical component. So if you have health issues, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, digestive issues, brain fog, make an appointment to come see us. Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. I want to be your doctor. I would love the opportunity to evaluate your nervous system, check your digestive system, look at your diet, and let's try to get to the cause of the problem. We, have, we do uh, erectile dysfunction treatments, ED treatments, all natural, no drugs, no injections, a fraction of the cost of what the other doctors charge. And we use something called acoustic wave therapy to stimulate blood supply, new blood cell growth. We give you home therapy, which is really important to do to stimulate new, new blood supply and new, grow, uh, new cell growth in there. And then we get you on supplements like nitric oxide. We do chiropractic care. We check the nerve supply in the low back that supplies the colon, sex, organs, and bladder. Nerves go to organs, folks. If you have a pinched nerve, it's going to affect an organ in the spine. And so we always want to check that as well. And so the results we get are pretty phenomenal, rel relatively inexpensive compared to what everybody else is charging. Uh, and we don't do any drugs or needles. So... If you want to make an appointment for any of the things we talked about, drjoe.com. Normally, the first visit for chiropractic is $940. We've reduced that to $299. The ED protocol is separate. Uh, we have a weight loss program, a natural weight loss program. So drjoe.com, uh, again, the, the initial visit, exam, x-rays, consultation, first adjustment, follow-up visit going over the x-rays, and a complete nutrition evaluation, normally $940. We've reduced that to $299. $299. So drjoe.com, you can book it right online. We accept people with all insurances. It depends what your insurance covers. We can't change that, but we can accept you as a patient. Payment plans available, uh, interest-free for 18 months for a lot of folks. It's so, it's so inexpensive, folks. Believe me, it's not that big a deal. So drjoe.com, stop suffering needlessly. I built this clinic almost 40 years ago with one thought in mind. Where would I go if I needed health care? And this is my clinic. This is where I come. You should come here too, drjoe.com. All right, other things, other uh, alternatives to sweeteners. Uh, maple syrup has a little more nutrients in it, calcium, magnesium, zinc, rich in antioxidants, still pretty high in sugar. So again, select a darker one if you can and only use it sparingly. Coconut sugar, more and more people using coconut sugar because of low glycemic load and a lot of minerals in there. So coconut sugar, I hate to say this because you're gonna take it out of context. It's not as bad as table sugar. It's not good. It's not as bad. Same thing with date sugar. It's not as bad as table sugar. It's not good, just not as bad. Blackstrap molasses, it's basically raw cane sugar. They boil it down until it's rich, this sweet syrup. Uh, comes from the third boiling, concentrating nutrients, uh, rich flavor. Uh, it's not really that sweet. It has a different flavor to it. I'm not that big a fan of blackstrap molasses. Uh, something that I like um, is balsamic glaze. It's a thick balsamic vinegar. Now, if you see the words balsamic of Moderna, that means it's a cheap version of vinegar, of balsamic vinegar. Uh, they kind of speed up the process. A real good balsamic is aged, and it takes a long time, and it's more expensive too. But if you can get a good balsamic vinegar, and it's aged properly, uh, you can use that on things like uh, I've used it on avocado toast. I love it as a salad dressing. I'd much rather use that than vinegar. I don't like tart flavors, and this actually has a sweet flavor to it. Not sweet sugary, but slightly sweet. So a good balsamic, uh, a, a thick balsamic glaze or even balsamic vinegar um, can help too. Now, I'm going to give you some tips if you have sugar cravings. I'm running out of time here. Um, you have a sugar craving, you're losing your mind. We talked about Gymnema, great supplement to stabilize blood sugar. If you send me a question through the website, drjoe.com, I'll send you a link to the one I recommend. When you're having a sugar craving, I want you to eat something sour. Have a dill pickle. Watch what happens. It resets your brain, and the sugar craving goes away in most cases. It's really cool. You can do vinegar. That works too. Um, but a, a dill pickle, just as, oh, I'm getting, my mouth is watering thinking about it. Um, 
So something really tart, something really uh, salty will help offset those sugar cravings. A lemon would work too. Suck on a lemon. And that helps break that sugar craving. So have a tablespoon or two of apple cider vinegar. Have a dill pickle. Have yourself suck on a lemon. And you'll be amazed how those sugar cravings start to go away. Things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, giving your body these high concentration of nutrients that you need so that um, your body says, oh, I don't need sugar. I'm good. My brain has enough nutrients. I'm okay. That can help with sugar cravings too. And then eating fiber is also good too because fiber pushes the sugar through your colon and gives you a slow release of sugar. So if you eat a donut, which is just pure sugar, bam, it gets all absorbed and then bam, your blood sugar crashes. If you eat something fibrous like fruit, for example, it slowly pushes the sugar through the colon and you get a slow release of energy. And then adding spices to things. Try things like ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg instead of sugar. I think you'll be pretty happy. Folks, I got so much more to cover and I just don't have enough time. If you have any questions, send them to me through my website, drjoe.com. If you want to make an appointment to come see us, and I think you should, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb, the Atlanta area, and we can do remote consultations, drjoe.com. Follow us on social media. We post health tips like this every single day, sometimes two and three a day. So it's at Dr. Joe Esposito, at Dr. Joe Esposito, all one word. Um, You don't want to not follow us. And it's free. If you don't like it, unfollow us. Sign up for our newsletter. It's on the website, drjoe.com, right in the front there. We send out uh, sometimes sales on supplements, sometimes special pop-up lectures. I've given away concert tickets in the past. uh, And sign up for that. You don't like it, unsubscribe. And follow us on your podcast service, Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, drjoe.com. Catch you next time. I didn't have enough time to cover everything I wanted. What a surprise. You have questions? I do. Okay. Um, so this person had an ultrasound done. said that they had fatty deposits on their liver. Where would that have come from? Did you listen for the past 40 minutes? <laughs> uh, alcohol or sugar? Those are the two things. Those are the two things that usually cause fatty deposits in the liver. Now, it could be steroids from meats and dairy products. It could be saturated fats. Um, it could be some genetic predisposition. It could be uh, uh, dehydration because you're not getting a fluid through the liver. It could be lack of nitric oxide, low glutathione. Um, it's, beca- it's diet. I'll give it to you in one word. It's your diet. So stop it and fix your diet. What else? Um, now, what would you need to do to maintain regular bowel movements? We have a supplement on our website. It's Dr. Joe's Intestinal Formula, um, and that works really well, but you have to find out why you're constipated or diarrhea. The first thing you do is check the nerves in the low back because they're the nerves that control the colon, the sex organs, and the bladder. We check to see if the stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm because if it is, we can pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm and oftentimes get the whole bowel to relax and work better. There's a valve between your small and large intestine called the ileocecal valve, And if it's stuck closed, you have constipation. Stuck open, you have diarrhea. So we want to check the function of that as well. Um, And so getting to the cause of the problem is the key. Now, if you're just constipated and want to take Dr. Joe's intestinal formula, well, that'll get your bowels moving, but it didn't fix the problem. It's the only supplement I've ever created I don't want you to take forever. All the other ones I think you should take forever. So let's get to the cause of it. Come see us. Let's get to the cause of it. I don't know if I want to share this one or not, but um, you look 40. (laughs) <laughs> I'm glowing. <laughs> yes, you should share that. Well, why wouldn't you want to share that one? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and I've been told that many, many, many times. And it's my lifestyle. It really is. I'm way older than that. Decades older than that. So, yeah, it does work. So, good. Why would you want to share that for me? <laughs> whoop your butt when I'm done with you, young man. <laughs> uh, you got what it takes in that old age? I think so. I got experience. <laughs> <laughs> that counts. That counts. I've had my uh, butt whooped enough to know how to get out of it. So, now what? Um, what are your thoughts on just natural sugar? Well, it depends what natural sugar is, like coconut mm-hmm. sugar, uh, date sugar. Those are better than regular sugar, but they're still concentrated sugars, and they still have to be converted into glucose. So uh, that's why once you stop eating so much sweet stuff, your bo- your brain resets itself. Remember we said if you have a lot of sugar, it down-regulates the pleasure centers in the brain so you don't get as high. 
And so once you cut out the sugar, the body can reset itself, reset those pleasure centers, and you don't eat as much sugar. So trust me when I say this, that it gets better when you cut out the sugar. So, but Stevie is a better choice. Uh, and what about monk fruit? Monk fruit, lohan, yeah. those are all fine too. Now, what foods would be high in nitric oxide? And I'll add to that an earlier question. Um, He's sorry, thinking. It's getting away from me. Um, I know we get so many when we do this. Chromium. Chromium. Okay. So chromium, nuts and seeds would be good. Uh, if you're eating a plant-based diet, you're getting plenty of chromium usually. Um, nitric oxide, uh, you want to have foods that are high in nitrates, plants that are high in nitrates. Uh, beets, green leafy vegetables, arugula. Uh, watermelon is high in citrulline. Citrulline converts into nitric oxide as well. In fact, Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support is made with citrulline. So those are foods. If you have a big green leafy salad every day, you're going to get some nitric oxide. Uh, I eat a plant-based diet. I have for 38 years now. That's why I look 40. And um, I still take nitric oxide supplements. It's great to increase circulation. I said the brain, the sex organs, the heart, the lungs, energy level, clarity of thought. This stuff just rocks. Um, yeah, so if you're eating good plant-based diet, you're going to get those nitrates. Nitrates, which convert into nitrites. Now, you can take those nitrates, celery, and add them to meat and then smoke that meat and create nitrosamines, which are carcinogenic. So the other day I said something about celery juice sometimes is used in like things like bacon and cold cuts, and they'll say uh, no added nitrates. Well, they had celery juice, which does have nitrates. And they said it's uncured. That's another word they might use. And they're using celery juice. But now the celery juice by itself is fine. Cooking with it, drinking with it, drinking it is fine. When you heat it at high temperatures near animal proteins, that's when it becomes a nitrosamine. But by itself, it's actually good for you. Uh, that should be enough there. <laughs> I can go on for hours. Um, is allulose, which is uh, like a low-calorie sugar, yeah. a good option for a sweetener? It's okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this person has been struggling with protruding back discs for about seven months, have tried everything to heal, but mm-hmm. am now headed for a uh, microdisectomy yes. surgery. Uh, really nervous. Do you have any suggestions? Well, you might want to come see us before the discectomy because we can put, we have tables in our offices that they're called flexion distraction tables. We put you on a table and it very gently drops the lower part of your body down and pulls apart the vertebrae. And as we separate the vertebrae, sometimes we can suck that m- small bulging disc back into place. And then we get you on a good supplement protocol to t- kind of tighten up those ligaments the best we can. So I would try to avoid the surgery at all costs if you can. Sometimes you can't. But I would try this first. And if it doesn't work, you can always have the surgery. Once you have the surgery, you can always come see us, of course, to stabilize the spine. But you reduce the risk of not having surgery by not having surgery. So, <laughs> yeah. So come see us, drjoe.com. We can get you in this week. Now, I've heard that almond milk actually has a high, uh, high fructose or corn syrup uh, additives. Is that true? Well, get the unsweetened. And problem solved. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, and the Dr. Joe's Women's Hormone Support, is that still on sale? Is it? John says yes. Mm-hmm. So you better hurry. We don't have a lot left. So, yeah, move quickly. Yeah, and stock up. Now, the thing with the supplements, they all have expiration dates on them, okay? Now, I've taken the supplements a year past the expiration date, and I find they're still fine. So we have to put an expiration date on it. And just like foods, it's a suggested time, best if used by. Um, so you might want to stock up on that. And, uh, God, $7 a bottle? $8 a bottle? Yeah, around $8 a bottle. So you want to stock up on that women's hormone support the best you can, yeah. And for men... You essentially can take the same one. It's the same ingredient. Yes. Uh, you just want to take double. Double it. Up. Yeah, just double it up then, yeah, if you want to take it. So save some money there too. Again, we put things on sale periodically because I want to introduce you to these products because I want you to see how amazing they are. So, And if you have hormone issues, you might want to come see us too because we could do something called the Dutch test, and we can test all your hormo- a lot of your hormones and not just, hey, what's your testosterone level, what's your estrogen level. The estrogen breaks down to three components. Are those components being broken down properly? Are they being excreted from the body properly? Testosterone has free and bound testosterone. So my testosterone levels may be way up here, but if it's all bound up, I'm not utilizing it. So general hormone tests don't give me nearly enough information that I want. A Dutch test is a lot more fun and a lot cheaper too usually. How long does a typical assessment take? Uh, Chiropractic assessment, you want to give us about an hour for that first visit if you have the paperwork all filled out. Nutrition, once you have it all filled out, probably about 15 minutes. Um, if you want to see a medical doctor for erectile treatment, that's probably about half hour. 
each treatment is about six treatments involved. Um, and that's where you use the acoustic wave. And we give you the home therapies and the nutrition. Um, it's not a, not, not a lot. It's pretty easy. We see patients because we do see them quickly. Yeah. What else? That is all for today. You guys are awesome. Follow me on all social media. That's your homework assignment. At Dr. Joe Esposito. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn. Same thing? Same thing. Same thing. At Dr. Joe Esposito. Um, so make sure you do that. And uh, what else? What else can we tell them to do? Homework. Oh, hashtag live if you're listening live right now. Hashtag replay if you're listening on a replay. And tell me where you're from. I'm just curious. Anything else? I'd add that for the younger people in your life, if you want them to uh, to get in on this show, uh, we are on Twitch. Oh, we're on Twitch. So there you go. Uh, for those 40-year-olds like myself. Uh, yes. <laughs> Nothing else? Thanks, guys. See you next week.